Stayallday.com. If you in here, if you join him, Sandy, what's going on? Mel, me, meow, what up? If you joining in right now, let me know your name, where you from. Sandy, Miami Beach, I saw you. Say what's up to Jared for me. Hey everybody, this is Dre all day. I've been looking around on Periscope, you know, I've been trying to figure out what's the what's the thing on Periscope that actually works. So I found that one of the most important things is just get right to the point without all the pomp and circumstance. So since y'all can watch this video, you can re-watch this later on. Well, we got to do it again, Sandy. I want to do it again. I'm still getting emails from that show, and it was almost a month ago. I'm still getting emails from people about that show. So I'm talking to Sandy. She knows Jared, Grant, Cardone, TV, Young Hustlers. So I want to do that show again. Kim, what's going on? It's been a while. We ain't talked in a minute. But listen, I found out that on Periscope, it's most important to get to the point. So let's get to the point. And today I want to talk about my daily routine, what I do every day, you know, what time I get up, what time I go to sleep, what time I do this, how much time I spend doing X, Y, Z. Because a lot of people ask me about this. You know, they want to be, they want to know how can they be more efficient, use their time more effectively. So the honest answer is my days are not always the same. And a lot of people will tell you that, especially people who are entrepreneurial in spirit or entrepreneurial in how they do their business, how they make their money. Every day is not going to be exactly the same. But I'm going to give you all a brief overview of what my days is like. First of all, what time do I get up? I get up between 4 o'clock and 4.30 a.m. every single day. If it's the weekend, on Saturday, I'll get up usually about 5, between 5 and 5.30. And on Sundays, it'll be between 5.30 and 6.30, sometime like that. So Sunday is like my little, that's like my little vacation. I get up between 5.30 and 6.30, depending on what I'm doing. But that's a usual, a usual quote-unquote normal week. Monday through Friday is between 4 and 4 a.m. Saturday... 5 and 5.30, Sunday, 6 and 6.30. So I always like to get up before the sun comes up. I don't want to wake up and it's light outside. I don't like that. And that the reason behind that is just my mentality. I don't want to ever feel like I'm starting to do, get to work after other people start to get to work. And that's just my mentality. It doesn't make me right or wrong. I know some of you are night people and you like to get stuff done at night. You might stay up till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. What's going on, Raider Nation Raw? Some of y'all might stay up till 2, 3 in the morning and get stuff done then. Me, I like to get stuff done early. And when I get up early in the morning, I like to get up and start getting stuff done. Like, I want to get stuff done before other people have even woken up. Great outlook. Thank you, Sandy. I want to get stuff done before other people have woken up. And as I'm doing this stream, if I say anything that y'all like, or you like the information I'm sharing, make sure you hit those hearts. Tap the screen. Hit those hearts. So I, wanted, I need to know. That's the only way I know that I'm saying good stuff besides your comments is you hitting those hearts. And the comments don't add up into my profile, but the hearts do. So I'd rather have the hearts. I want the comments too, but I want the hearts as well. So if you leave a comment, give me hearts. But anyway, I like to get up and know that I'm getting stuff done before other people get stuff done. So that's my mentality behind getting up so early. And why I started getting up this early, I'm going to tell you all a story of how that happened. Back in 2006, 2006, this was the around this time of year, 2006, nine years ago. Young Hustler, Sandy, I see you. Nine years ago. I had just come off playing my first three professional playing situations. First was in Lithuania, second was this traveling team in the States called the Harlem Ambassadors, and the third one I was in Mexico. So around this time of year, it was around this time, September, October, November 2006, I came back. I was still living at my parents' house because even though I made money while I was playing, I didn't make enough that I could kind of just live and it was going to last for X amount of time. I didn't know how long the money was going to last, so I couldn't even make that move. So I was still living at my parents' house. It's 2006, I was, yeah, 2006, 2006, whatever. And I had a job. I was working nine to five at this gym called Philadelphia Sports Club because I'm from Philadelphia. And my job was actually, I wasn't even nine to five. I was eight to like eight, like eight to five. Because you know what jobs now, it's not nine to five, it's like nine to six because they got factor in your lunch hours. So you still give them eight hours of work. So it was eight to five that I was working at this gym in downtown Philly. Sandy, you from Philly? What part of Philly are you from? I didn't even know that. But I was working at this gym, downtown Philly, Society Hill, 5th and Spruce Streets, for any of y'all who's from Philly, or not far from South Street. And I had to be there at 8 o'clock. And at the time, I lived in right next to Bala Kenwood. So it's a, it's a road in Philly called City Line Avenue. If you're from Philly, you know this. It's not important where I live. You don't have to know this if you're not from Philly. But anyway, it was about 20, 30 minutes. Okay, Montgomery County, Bluebell. Yeah, so not far from Plymouth Meeting Mall. That's where I used to work. I worked several jobs at that mall. So... I'm working there at City Line Avenue, and the gym that I happen to work at, y'all, 
didn't have a basketball court. One thing I liked about working at a gym was that I could get the workout for free because I'm an athlete, so of course I need to work out every day. So it's make it perfect to be able to factor in working out with my actual nine to five job while I'm making money. But the gym I worked at didn't have a basketball court. But because this gym was a corporation, uh, Q102, I remember Q102. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know if they still around, but I used to listen to Q102 growing up. It's the Sandy, she's from Philly commenting for those of y'all who don't know. But anyway, being that this gym was a corporation, they had multiple locations. And since I worked there, I had a, a free membership to the gym, which means I could go to any location and just tell them, hey, I work at this gym, I'm a member of the company. And they said they would say, okay, go ahead, use the gym. So I found the location that actually had a basketball court. That location though, so let's just say I work here, my job was down here, and the gym that had a basketball court was up here. So every morning I had to wake up here, drive to this basketball court up here, and then go from this basketball court all the way past my house back to where I actually worked, which was down here. And mind you, I had to be at work at eight o'clock in the morning. So you do the math on what I had to do, because I had to wake up, get dressed, eat breakfast, go to the gym, work out, take a shower, put on business casual clothing and drive and be there by eight o'clock in the morning. I had to do all of that by 8 a.m. every single day. So you factor in what time I would have to get up. So me, I just reverse engineered the whole thing. I said, all right, so I got to be to work by eight. And me, I always do things early, if you can't tell. So I said, I got to be work at eight. I usually got to work about 730. So I had 30 minutes to, you know, peruse the Internet, read my text messages, you know, BS around. Dre Baldwin equals beast mode. It's funny. One of my business partners like to call himself beast mode all the time. So <laughs> it's funny that you said that Raider Nation not raw. So I just reverse engineer. So I need to be to work by 730. That was just my standard. I like to do stuff early. I'm going to get to work by 730. And it was beating the Philadelphia traffic on the Schuylkill Expressway, I-76 South. So I want to be to work by 730. And it was about a 45-minute drive from the basketball court gym to my job gym. So I had to reverse that. That takes me to what? That takes me to about 6.45. It takes me about 15 minutes to take a shower after my workout, which means I need to get off the court at 6.30, and I want to work out for at least an hour, which means I had to be, and the gym actually opened. The gym with the basketball court, it didn't open till 5.30, so it's perfect timing. So the gym opens at 5.30. I work out till 6.30, shower till 6.45, dressed in the car by 6.45, at my job by 7.30. I had to do that every single day. So if I had to be at this gym at 5.30, what time would I have to get up? Because I got to get up, kind of wake up a little bit, eat some food, and drive to that gym. That gym was 40 minutes away with no traffic. <laughs> so which means I had to leave my house at 4.50. And which means I was getting up at like 4 o'clock in the morning. No, nah, not even 4.30, like 4 o'clock. Because if you wake up at 4.30, you got to be in the car at 4.50. I still got to kind of wake up a little bit. I got to see who called me overnight, you know, check my email. I got to get dressed, I gotta brush my teeth, wash my face, eat some food, drink some water, I gotta kinda wake myself up, I gotta be up. So I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning in 2006 to go work out at the gym, it was 40 minutes away, then driving another hour back to my job, just to work that nine to five, and all of this understand that I had no idea when my next professional job was coming, where it was gonna be, how much it was gonna pay me, and even, I didn't even know if I was gonna get another professional playing job. But I knew I had to I knew I had to not get comfortable with my situation. Because my situation was I'm working nine to five at this gym. I the job wasn't bad. I didn't hate the job, but it wasn't my goal, it wasn't my ambition. I knew what I wanted to do was just play basketball professionally. So my mentality was nobody gave me this mentality, but my thought was listen, if I want to be a professional at basketball, I gotta figure out, I gotta work being a professional into my schedule, which means what does a professional athlete do? A professional athlete trains every single day it doesn't matter what else is going on they have to train and i'm looking at it like think about all the players who do have a playing job right now they training every day so if i get comfortable in my situation of oh i have this job or i start looking at it like oh let me look at quote unquote reality i don't have a job so let me stop showing up to the gym every day i'll start treating it like a professional when i'm getting paid like a professional i would have never got back into pro basketball and it took me about a year and a half to get back into the pros i got my first three jobs playing pro ball internationally then I went a year and a half without having a job, period. And a lot of people don't even know that. And when I write my entire book about my basketball career, you'll get to you'll hear all these stories. And there's a lot. I'm still writing it so much. I'm not I'm on like the third year. Not even the third year. I'm on like the second year right now. And I got like fifty pages. So once I get finished writing this, y'all gonna see. But anyway, I went like a year and a half without a job. I didn't know how I was going a playing job. I didn't know where my next job was coming from, but I knew I had to keep working because if somebody called me, if an agent had called me 
three months into that 18 month period and said, hey, Dre, I got a playing opportunity for you right now in Russia. Are you ready to go? I would have to be ready to go out there and play. That's the way pro basketball works. It's not like you get a couple months ahead of time. They're like, hey, you're going to be coming here in two months. Make sure you start getting in shape. It does for some players. It wasn't for me. Almost every job I got, I got the job like a week before I had to be there. So you can't get in shape, in professional athlete shape in a week. I had to go and be ready every single day. So I was getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, driving to that gym. And mind you, I was going to sleep. I wasn't going to sleep at 8 p.m. I was going to sleep at 11, 12 o'clock every single day, waking up at 4 o'clock, go to the gym, work out, work out, take a shower, drive to that job. And I damn near got fired from this job because (laughs) this job was a corporation. And a corporation is like they had a, uh, you know, they got a main headquarters and they got all these locations. 2K Hearts, Raider Nation, I appreciate that. Keep going with the hearts. I see Raider Nation and Sandy giving me all the hearts. There's 13 people watching. Where the rest of y'all at? Can I get some hearts, please? Can I please get some love? But anyway, there we go. I see some of y'all coming in there. The thing is, I almost got fired from this job multiple times because the bosses kept catching me falling asleep at my desk. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm sitting at a desk kind of like you can't even see my desk right now. But it's a, a basic desk. I got my little chair. I got my computer, the company computer there. And right across from me was the my boss's his name was Gary. He had an office right across the hall. So sometimes if you sit in there all day, all we did there was prospect and talk to people who walked in the gym, try to sell them a gym membership. I was not a personal trainer actually taking people through workouts. I was a salesperson. So I had on some khakis, a button-up shirt, some shoes, and that's all I did all day was try to sell people on getting memberships to the gym. That was my job. I like doing sales, so I'd rather do sales than personal training, honestly. But anyway... I'm in there and early in the morning, so let's say by like 10 o'clock in the morning, so I've been up since 4 o'clock, I already worked out, I only had like 4 or 5 hours of sleep and this job is boring as hell, I'm falling asleep at the desk. So the assistant manager was in the office next to mine, so every once in a while he'd walk out of his office just to walk over, just bullshit with us, and me and there was this girl named Donna, she was my office mate, he would just come in there just to say what's up to us, sometimes he'd walk over and see I was dozing off at the desk, so he would joke about it, he wouldn't get angry, but he'd joke. And he had a camera phone back then. I didn't even had no camera phone. Mind you, this is like 10 years ago before camera phones were ubiquitous. He had a camera phone and he would take a little video of me falling asleep and joke with me. Like, yeah, Dre, I saw you falling asleep at your desk. And I was like, no, I would always deny it. Like, no, I, never, I don't fall asleep. I never fall asleep at my desk. So he was like, all right, next time I catch you falling asleep, I'm going to take a video so we got proof. So then he took a video one day. One day I woke up from one of my little siestas. Mind you, this is, it would last like 10 seconds, right? <laughs> and I woke up. And he was standing right there with his camera phone. And I was like, oh, shit. So then he laughed. And we joke about it, but he was also the manager. He had to report to the main boss, who was Gary. So he would show Gary, like, in a joking way. He was kind of, like, dry snitching, if you really want to put it that put it that way. But anyway, he showed to Gary. And Gary would kind of get a little bit serious. Like, Jerry, you can't be falling asleep at work. And then one day, I was dozing off. And Gary saw me dozing off from across the hall. And he walked over there. He was like, Dre, if I catch you falling asleep again, I'm going to have to send you home. Because, you know... It's corporate. And he was just, it wasn't that Gary had a problem with, he, he knew my situation. He knew what I was doing. He knew I was trying to get back into playing basketball. He knew I was going to that other location and working out every morning. He knew that. He understood that. But at the same time, his job was to, hey, make sure these salespeople are getting sales. Because if we didn't get sales, you guess whose head was going on the chopping block? His ass was getting fired. Because I understand this is corporate. So everything, the shit just travels downhill. So exactly. So he had a boss. His boss had a boss. Their boss had a boss. So whenever something went wrong with the boss that's 10 levels above, they just give shit to the person below them. They give them shit. They give them shit. And then they give Gary some shit. And then Gary would give us shit. And I was one of, I was under Gary. He was the boss. So anytime he was stressed out because his boss was stressed out, he'd come to us with the bullshit. So anyway... He's like, yo, if I catch you falling asleep again, I'm going to have to send you home. I was like, all right, all right, right, I'm sorry. So that's how actually I'm going to use it as that is an excuse for why I start eating so much goddamn candy. Because at the time, like two two streets down, there was a supermarket called Super Fresh. They don't have those here in Miami, but over in Philadelphia is a supermarket called Super Fresh. And it was two blocks away from where I work. So I would go to Super Fresh like every other day and I would buy the five pound bag of Twizzlers. Every other day, five pound bag. And I would go get some Ziploc bags from the supermarket. I had a a box of Ziploc bags, those one-gallon Ziploc bags that you put food in and stuff. And I would keep those in my office drawer. And every time I bought, I would buy that five-pound bag of Twizzlers. I open up the bag and put them all into the Ziploc bag so they stayed fresh. And I would just eat Twizzlers all day. 
So I was on a, a sugar rush kind of all day. For any of you who ever ate a whole bunch of candy, you know what happens when you eat a whole bunch of candy in the morning. What happens in the afternoon? Boom. Crash. So around, so I would take my lunch probably around between 12 and 3, sometime in that, one hour in that, sometime in that time frame. That's when the day got boring because we working in downtown Philadelphia. So any of you ever worked at a downtown business, you know the busiest time of day is you get a few people in the morning and the lunch hour, that's when everybody comes in. Candy Gang used to be on Super Fleet, Sandy, you don't even know. I'm a candy connoisseur, man. I don't even eat candy no more. But anyway. Anybody who ever worked in the downtown area, like the financial district of any type of work that you have, financial district of a city, the busiest time of day is in the lunch hour because that's when everybody's on lunch. So they're like, oh, yeah, I'm on lunch. Let me go to the gym. Oh, yeah, I meant to join the gym. Let me go see what's going on. Oh, yeah, I got to go to the bank. Oh, yeah, let me go get something to eat. And right after that lunch hour, that period between, let's just say, between 1 and like 4 o'clock before everybody gets off of work, you know, after work it gets busy again. But that 1 and 4 o'clock time window when Everybody went back to work from lunch, but nobody's off of work yet to come into your business. That three-hour period is dead. There's nothing happening. The whole rush of lunch is over. You might have the itis because you ate some good food at lunch. So everybody starts falling asleep. It ain't nobody to talk to because nobody's coming in the gym. I will fall asleep again. So I start falling asleep at my desk. So then I went and got a, a little clock radio. Any of you, I mean, at your homes, you know, you have the little clock radio with the alarm you keep next to your bed. I went and bought a clock radio. I actually purchased a clock radio and brought it to work and sat it on my desk next to me and I would listen to the radio. And I turned it up, you know, sometimes my office mate Donna would be like, yo Dre, can you um turn that music down a little bit? Because <laughs> I had the music up loud because it was keeping me awake. <laughs> so <laughs> I had the candy and when the candy ran out, it was the music. And when it wasn't no music, sometimes I just get out, I go walk around downtown Philly prospecting. I wasn't really prospecting. I'd go to fucking Starbucks on South Street Right across, right across the street from Jim Steaks. Any you've been to, any you've been to Philly, been on South Street. There's a restaurant called Jim Steaks, and a lot of people argue that they might actually have the best cheese steaks, but that's a whole other periscope. Diagonally from that is a Starbucks, and it has two levels. So it's a downstairs, and there's an upstairs you can sit, and they got couches, real comfortable seats. I will go up there to that Starbucks almost every day. You know there, you know that place, Sandy. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Anybody from Philly knows exactly what I'm talking about. I will sit upstairs in that Starbucks, y'all. I would bring books. I would read books. I would sit up there and write. I sit up there and listen to like music on my on my phone with the uh, headphone. No, it wasn't even a phone. It was an iPod. It was an iPod back in 2006. I used to listen to my iPod every day, and I'd be up there dozing off in Starbucks. But Gary, my boss, couldn't catch me because I was out prospecting, meeting new people that I could bring into the gym. <laughs> so I used to sit up in Starbucks and just doze off. And at that time of my life, I know I'm going on a complete tangent from what this is supposed to be about. But at that time of my life, I didn't know what I was doing. Like I'd already had the success of playing pro basketball. But at the time, I didn't have it. I didn't know if it was going to happen again. I'm working at this nine to five dead end job. It was dead end to me. Any of you who work in that industry is not saying anything negative about what you do. I'm not judging your position, but it was dead end to me because I knew what I wanted and I didn't have it. And I had no idea how, if, or when I was going to get back into it. And I'm sitting in Starbucks on South Street with these business casual clothes on, telling people like, yeah, yeah, I used to play basketball overseas. How, do, how would that sound if somebody said that to you? You know, I'm, I'm walking around with a bunch of slips of paper trying to prospect you to join the gym. And they're like, oh, how long you been working here? I'm working here a couple months. You know, I just got done playing basketball overseas. Like, you just got done. Ain't you like 25? So it was like, you know, at that time, I didn't really feel, I didn't feel, uh, what's the word I'm going to put? I didn't feel successful at that time. Yes, I'm definitely from Philly Solutions Church, Mount Airy, Stinton Avenue and Dorset Street, 19150. My cell phone's still 267. But anyway, at that time, I didn't know where I was going in life. Well, I knew where I knew I was eventually going to get there. I could see it in my mind, but I had no plan. I didn't have no help. There was no there was no guy on YouTube making basketball videos. I became that guy. There was nobody 215. I see you Stinton and Top of Hawking, you Mount Airy or what's that? West Oak Lane and Solutions Church. I know exactly where that is. So <clears throat> at that time, I didn't have anybody helping me. There was not a lot of websites out there. There weren't a lot of blogs. There was no Twitter. There was no Facebook. YouTube was brand new. So there wasn't no, nowhere on the Internet I could go look and get the information. I, I knew I was going to get there, but I had no idea how it was going to happen. No idea. Philly tried. Philly pride. Sandy, I see that. I had no idea how it was going to happen. Anyway, let me go back to the point of this. So I'm working at this job. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you how I almost got fired again. So this is, a, this is a third situation. A third different person almost fired me from my job. 
So when you work in corporate America, Raider Nation, yes, you can ask some questions. Let me get through the story first. I'm going to take questions at the end. When you work in corporate America, they usually have like quarterly meetings or regional meetings every couple months or every six months. There's some meeting that you got to go to. Now, when you're in Philly, the meeting might be local. So they might take all the Philadelphia sports clubs in the city and say, all right, everybody come meet at this office in downtown Philly two Thursdays from now from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And when you work in sales, the last thing you want to do is go to a fucking regional meeting because you can't make sales. I'm like, shit, why are we at, why are you having us go to a regional meeting for three hours? None of us are going to make any sales during this three hour period. I would say that to my boss, Gary, but what the hell, what the hell is Gary going to say? He said, so I played at Finley. Absolutely. Of course I played at Finley. Wait a minute. I got to Wait, I'm sorry. I got to go back. I'm going to come back to that. But Solutions Turk just asked me that I play at Finley Playground. Solutions Turk, listen to this. I built the courts at Finley Playground. I started playing ball. First place I ever played basketball was Finley Playground. And if you follow my Instagram, you'll see a picture when I was in Philly this past July. I posted a picture of me standing right there outside the courts. But I built those courts. From 1996 through 2001, there's not a single individual who spent more time on those courts than me. That's an absolute fact. You can look it up. But anyway, now back to the story. He was asking me about the playground I grew up playing basketball at. But absolutely played at Finley, played at Simons, played at uh, Pleasant, played at Mount Airy Playground. But we'll come back. That's a whole different periscope. But anyway, let me get to the story. So we had these regional meetings where they have everybody, everybody who worked at every gym come to these regional meetings. Just the salespeople. So it's like three, four salespeople at each gym. is about 15 gyms. So you got about, no, it wasn't even that many. It was say about 20, 30 total people in the meeting. So we sit in this big office meeting room and the area manager. So my boss was Gary. His boss would come in and you got the boss from every gym. They in there sitting. They all had to sit just like us because we was nothing but minions to the company. And this guy, the area manager, he was a minion too, but he acted like he was the man because in that room, he was the man because he was the boss of everybody in that room. He had the power to hire and fire anybody in that room at the snap of a finger. So he thought he was the shit. And this is, I didn't understand this stuff back then because I didn't know any better. I know better now, but I didn't know any better. So this guy, he comes in and he's doing this. He's doing all this talking. He talked for like three hours straight. He's going over, oh, this is what we're doing with our memberships, and this is how we can push the membership, and this is how we can get new members, and these are some ways you can prospect. He wasn't really saying nothing, and you got to understand with a publicly traded company that's a corporation, change happens extremely slow. So when they have a regional meeting every three, four months, guess what? Guess what changed in those last four months? Not a damn thing. Nothing changed. So he had these meetings, and he's talking and talking and talking, and I'm falling asleep. <laughs> so <laughs> we had a break right so during this meeting we would break like every 90 minutes so he talks for the first 90 minutes and he breaks and he's like yeah we got a break so we have a break and he called me over to the side during the break and he was like hey listen Dre I forget this guy his name is Brian actually I know his last name his name is Brian Chunglo Brian Chunglo C-H-U-N-G-L-O so I hope he's watching this or somebody know him telling myself what's up so Brian Chunglo he was an asshole too so Brian Chunglo calls me to the side during the break. He's like, hey, Dre, um, listen, while I'm talking up there, I've seen you dozing off a couple times. You can't be dozing off in these meetings. These are, you know, and he's the regional manager. It's his show. The meeting is like his chance to be the man. So, of course, he wants everybody paying attention to him. And he was a corporate schmuck. And he was also an asshole on top of that. Just in normal life, he was an asshole. So he was like, you know, Dre, you can't be falling asleep. He's saying it very seriously. You can't be falling asleep in these meetings. And if I catch you falling asleep again, we're going to have a problem. This is what he says to me. And I'm like, and of course me, I am I work there. So I need this job because I had an apartment. You know, I got bills to pay. I need this job. So I couldn't really, I couldn't really be like, yo, whatever, man, shut up. I couldn't do that because he could have fired me on the spot. But I also... And now looking back, I knew he probably wouldn't have fired me because I was a really good salesperson. It would have hurt him to fire me, even though it would have satisfied his uh, ego. It would have hurt his bottom line and probably cost him his job to fire me and cost Gary his job because he wouldn't have had good sales at his position. So he wouldn't have fired me, but I didn't know that back then. So I was like, yo, I wasn't falling asleep. I was just always denying it. I was like, yo, I wasn't falling asleep. I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, I saw you falling asleep. I saw you. So don't fall asleep again. Anyway, the conversation ended with him saying, hey, don't fall asleep again or me and you're going to have a problem. And I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So I walk away. I go get some lunch. We come back to the meeting. He starts talking again. And I, do I have to tell you what happened? <laughs> About 45 minutes in, I'd start dozing off again. And this time, 
is in the middle of like we had some guest speaker come in. I guess some person. I don't even know what the hell he was talking about. Don't even matter. I think it was like the PT area manager, personal training area manager, because the sales and the personal training people work together. So the sale, the personal training guy would come in. He would just talk about, hey, this is how you sales people. When you sign somebody up for a gym membership, you can try to sell them personal training at the same time because we got commission on the personal training packages that we sold along with the sale, the membership packages that we sold. So he's trying to motivate us to sell PT, which is personal training, along with the membership. So while he's talking, I start dozing off again. So Brian Chunglo, the area manager, he saw me. like He caught me in the act of dozing off. While the guy's talking, mind you, it's 30, picture this, it's 30 people in the room, everybody's dead quiet, bored as fuck because this dude is just talking, talking, talking. We all want to be at work making sales because we're on commission. So we only make money when we make sales, but we can't make sales today because we got to go to this dumbass meeting. So everybody's bored as fuck, but everybody's being polite. So everybody's bored, but they're all awake because they all got more than five hours of sleep the night before. I'm dozing off. The PT guy's talking out of nowhere. The room's dead silent. 30 people listening. Out of nowhere, Brian's like, Dre, come outside. Bring your stuff. Everybody in the room just froze and stopped looking at me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> everybody in the room just froze and started looking at me. And I couldn't lie because he caught me dozing off. When he said Dre, I woke up. <laughs> so <laughs> when he said Dre, he woke me up out of my dream. So I had to grab my stuff and my manager Gary was sitting there and I could see the look on Gary's face. He looked like he was about to cry <laughs> because <laughs> mind you, Gary is my boss. So Gary is thinking, this is what this is Gary's thought process. If Brian fires Dre, now I gotta find another salesperson to replace Dre. And until I find a good enough salesperson, my sales at my club are gonna struggle, which means corporate's gonna look at me and think I'm a bum and they might fire me or lower my pay. So Gary didn't really care about me getting in trouble. He was caring about his bottom line, which means he was gonna be in trouble if I got fired. So when he saw Brian call me out and he knew why, because everybody there, I had a reputation for dozing off at work. And I don't mind it because shit, I have more important things to do, like work on my ambitions, my real life, not this dumbass corporate job. So anyway, I saw Gary's face. He like he's about to cry or throw up or both. So anyway, <laughs> Brian calls me outside of the room. And mind you, the doors of the room are glass. So everybody in the room sees the conversation that's happening between me and Brian. As soon as we get out the room and the door closes, Brian starts talking. But the PT guy went on with his, his went on with his presentation. So the PT guy is giving his presentation, but everybody in the room is looking through the glass door to see this co confrontation or conversation, whatever you want to call it, between me and the area manager Brian Chungo. <laughs> so Brian's like, "I told you if I caught you falling asleep again, we were gonna have a problem." And he said something. He was like, just go home. Don't go back to the club. No, this is what he said. He said, get out of here. Leave the meeting. Don't go back to the club. Just go home and we'll talk later. That's what he said. He said, go home and we'll talk later. And he made it specifically said, don't go back to your club. Because when he kicked me out, my first thought was, you know what? I hope he kicks me out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to my club where I work. And I'm going to make all the sales while all my other fellow salespeople are, yeah, while all my other fellow salespeople are stuck in the meeting, I'm going to just make all the sales. I was happy for a second. And then he was like, don't go back to the club. <laughs> and I'm like, shit. <laughs> so I lost my opportunity to make some sales that day. He's like, don't go back to the club. Go home. And honestly, what I could have did, now looking back, if I had known then what I know now, I would have just went to the club and make sales. What's he going to do? Fire me for making sales? Of course not, because his paycheck is attached to how many sales we make at the gym. So he wouldn't have fired me for that. And, and honestly, it would have been a hell of a story. It would have been an even better story for me to tell you all that. But I didn't know then what I know now. So I did what he said. I went home. I went home, uh, took a nap <laughs> for like two hours. Then I went to the gym and worked out. And I probably recorded some videos that ended up being on my YouTube channel years later or that year. So anyway, he kicks me out. The next day, no, actually later that day, my manager, my boss, Gary, called me. Because I guess Brian, you no, know, talked to Gary and was like, hey, that guy's falling asleep. And basically, the way corporate America works is very simple. If the guy two levels above you sees you're doing something wrong, he doesn't even get on you. He gets on the guy above you. So even though Gary didn't have nothing to do with me falling asleep, he's not the reason I slept five hours the night before. Brian gave Gary shit. He yelled at Gary and cursed Gary out for having one of his employees falling asleep in a regional meeting. What is Gary? What fault is it of Gary's? No. But Gary calls me. And Gary's a real cool dude. He's not a he's not a bash people upside the head dude. His personality's not like mine. He's a real compassionate, cool guy. And Gary calls me. He's like, and he sounds like, I don't know how how he sounds like 
somebody had kidnapped his, his sister or something. He's like, Dre, please, man, please. Like, you can't be falling asleep. You know, Brian wanted to, I don't know what Brian's going to do. You know, I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. I have no idea what it is. And I'm like, well, Gary, what's the situation? I'm like, Gary, just tell me the bottom line. Am I fired or what? And he was like, no, come to work tomorrow. He's like, come to work tomorrow, Dre. I don't know what Brian's going to do. He was really pissed, man. You can't be falling asleep at work. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow when I see you at work. I'm like, all right, cool. So next morning, I go work out at the gym. Right, poor Gary. Gary's caught in the middle of this. He had nothing to do with it. So I, I go to the gym the next morning, the other gym, the basketball gym, come back to work, start working. Because all my stuff is still at the gym anyway. So even if I got fired, I still had to come in there. And if they had fired me, you know what I did? I would have came in there and just talked to Gary and pleaded for my job. And what I, I would have kept my job. They wasn't going to fire me because, I mean, who are they going to replace me with? It's not a matter of I was just some super great salesperson. I was, but... It's not about that. They could have found another salesperson, but you understand in corporate America how much money it costs to, to first of all, find, interview, hire, and train a new employee. It costs corporate America a lot of money. So any of you work in corporate or you do in the future, understand that they'd much rather keep you than fire you because it costs them a whole lot of money to replace a worker in corporate America. So if they, once they hire you, they've already invested thousands of dollars in getting you into that spot. They don't want to spend another few thousand to replace you. So anyway, they didn't fire me. Brian never said nothing to me. I guess he just talked shit to Gary, and Gary talked shit to me. I just kept working there. But anyway, the whole what's the point of this whole Periscope? I'm trying to tell you about my daily routine. I ain't even get to it yet. I had to give y'all the whole. I had to give y'all context. That's what I do. I like to give people context of why I do the things that I do. So I gave y'all the context of how I start getting up at four in the morning. And that's the reason I start getting up at four in the morning. So then years later, probably about three, four years later, I'm in Miami, right? And I'm working out at this gym. And one day they put a sign. And I used to get to the gym at later in the morning. I would get to the gym like 9, 10, 11 o'clock sometimes in the morning. I'm working out. And one day they put a sign up on the door. And they said, we have a basketball camp. Somebody's running a basketball camp for the next 30 days. And the gym is going to be closed from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So the only time anybody could use the gym is if you get in the gym after 5 or you get in the gym before 7. Mind you that the gym only opened at 6 o'clock. So I'm like, all right, now I got a choice. Now I knew inherently all you play basketball, you know. If you show up to a gym after 5 o'clock, who's going to be in the gym? All right, the whole fucking neighborhood is going to be in the gym. So I said, I can't get at the gym at 5 o'clock. I got to get in the gym before they had this camp. So I started coming to the gym every day at 6 o'clock right when the doors open so I could work out right there and get my workout in before anybody else showed up. So I work out till 7 o'clock. The little camp thing started coming in. I knew the guy who ran the camp. He'd say what's up to me. i get my stuff and i leave. So I started doing that every day and it kind of became a habit. It was a forced habit. I had no choice but to start getting up that early. And then that's how I started developing that wake up early thing. And then even after the camp was over, I was like, no, this is great. I could come in the gym and work out and nobody else is here. I got the gym to myself. So I started doing that over and over and over again. And that was in 2008, 2009. And here we are, 2015. I haven't stopped. So it became a forced habit. Now it's a habit just out of discipline. I just do it anyway. There's no, I don't have any deadlines. I don't have anybody expecting me. I don't have a boss. But I still get up early because I like to get stuff in before everybody else. So let me get to the rest of my morning routine. So I told you about waking up. It took me 45 minutes to tell you why I wake up at the time I wake up. Let me get through the rest of this. I wake up. First thing I do every day is work out. So I wake up. Let's say I wake up about 4 o'clock. By 5 o'clock, I'm out of the house. Before I leave the house... Uh, of course, wash your face, brush your teeth, all that stuff. <clears throat> I eat two bananas. I start every day by eating two bananas. I don't eat anything else, and I drink one bottle of water, this exact size. This is 33.8 fluid ounces. One quart, 1.8 fluid ounces, also known as one liter, for those of you who are on the metric system. So one liter of water every single morning and two bananas. That's it. That's all I eat every morning, nothing else. If I don't have any bananas, then I'll replace a banana with an apple. So if I only got one banana left, I'll eat one banana and one apple. If I had no bananas, I eat two apples. So every single morning, that's what I eat. So I keep fruit in the crib. So two bananas and a liter of water. And what I do also before I leave the house, I go over my personal development stuff, which means I keep stuff written down or I might keep a folder of photos or personal affirmations and things like that. And I go over those every single day for anywhere between five and 20 minutes, depending on how much time I got or how much I get into it or whatever. Five to 20 minutes, that's looking at photos, kind of like a vision board. You heard of vision boards. I don't actually have a vision board, but I keep photos in a folder like on my phone or on my computer, something like that. 
I keep affirmations written down or certain things that motivate and inspire me written down in different folders on my phone or my computer every single day. I read through those things. I read them even out loud to myself. Sometimes looking in the mirror, that's a thing I got from uh, Napoleon Hill. Any of you familiar with Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich? I got that from him. And a lot of other personal development experts talk about the same thing. Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, all those guys. So I do that. Then I'll leave the house. I go to the gym. Either I go to the gym and basketball, gym and lift weights, gym and cardio, or I go outside to the beach and run, stuff like that. Or I might do all three in the same day or a combination of two of those or just one of them. That's every single day I work out. My workout's done. I get back home. I'm usually back home by somewhere between 6.30 and 7.30 in the morning. 6.30, 7.30 in the morning, I shower. I start heating up the food that I'm going to eat. I get my meals delivered to me, so I start heating up the food. During the 15 or so minutes it takes for the food to heat up, I'm catching up on everything. So I'm either I'm reading emails, I'm checking you know, sales reports from the previous day, catching up on my Twitter feed, looking at what happened on Instagram, reading any Facebook messages I got from anybody, seeing if I got any new messages, anything like that, all my notifications. I'm catching up on all that stuff. Or um, and or I'm reading stuff. So I might be working on a book. I just finished Sally Hogshead's book called How the World Sees You. It's just about how you get seen in your best light. I just actually finished that book today, late this morning. So I'm reading a book. Then I eat my food. And I'm, I'll usually listen to podcasts while I'm eating. So I have my hands free. Podcast. What podcast do I listen to? Grant Cardone TV. Definitely. Grant Cardone. I listen to James Altucher. He got like three different podcasts. I listen to Tim Ferriss. I listen to uh, who else I listen to? I don't even know. It's all on my phone. I can't look at that. Grain is definitely the man. So I listen to a whole bunch of different podcasts. I listen to, sometimes I listen to Jalen and Jacoby. Sometimes I listen to Zach Lowe, uh, Bill Simmons. He's coming back October 1st. I listen to them. But I listen to a lot of personal development and business stuff. I don't listen to a lot of stuff that's just pure entertainment. Only once in a while. But usually I'm listening to personal development and business. Or I'll grab up my, I got a MacBook Pro sitting here to my left. And I got my, this is a Samsung Chromebook. Any of you ever got a Chromebook? The Chromebook is only like, I bought this for like 250 bucks. So, and I pull up on my Chromebook, I pull up my uh, YouTube watch later. So I save videos. Anytime I see a video that's interesting, I save that and I watch that video. Who else I listen to? I listen to a podcast called MLM Nation. I listen to a guy called Eric Borey. I listen to some Jim Rohn stuff. I listen to Zig Ziglar, Napoleon Hill, uh, Les Brown. Whoever else, all those personal development people that y'all know and love. I listen to that stuff while I'm eating. When I'm done eating, usually every day I like to make like three or four phone calls every morning early. Like before 8 o'clock, I like to make, make like three or four phone calls. I don't know Ty Lopez. I've heard that name, but I don't know him. So I like to make like three or four phone calls every morning. So that might be a follow-up to some speaking engagement I'm trying to get, somebody I'm doing business with, somebody who called me the night before I didn't get to answer the phone. E.T., I like E.T., but I don't listen to E.T. every day. Honestly, I don't. I did a video with E.T., though, for those of you who don't know. Weekly Motivation number 91. I'm on Weekly Motivation like 260 now. But number 91 in 2012, did a video with E.T. E.T. is a good dude. So, <clears throat> what was I talking about? So, I like to make three or four phone calls, following up on business sales. Somebody who called me the previous day. I just like to get a head start on getting business done. And a lot of times, you call somebody before 8 o'clock, they surprise. Like, damn, Joe, you called me at 8 o'clock in the morning? Or if they don't answer, you can just leave them a message and now they got to call you back. So anyway, I do that. And then usually late morning, I like to take a nap because you know, it's not humanly possible because I sleep like five to six hours at night every day. It's not humanly possible to run on five or six hours of sleep consistently for a long period of time. It's been shown that if you don't get enough sleep, you're at the same level mentally as somebody who's drunk. So you don't want to be drunk. So I catch up on my sleep uh, late morning or early afternoon. I take a nap. Then once I'm awoke, you know, again, I'm catching up on text, phone calls, social media, emails. Yes, I definitely take naps every day. It's funny, you know, every time I tell, every time a female hears me say that I take naps, they laugh. But, and they think it's cute. But yes, I do take naps every single day. So I do that, take naps, I wake up and catching up on text messages, phone calls, emails, social media, stuff that I'm reading. And then I get to the rest of my day. Usually that's by about 12 o'clock. So now I'm at full energy. I get to do my thing. I do yoga. I do about 10 to 15 minutes of yoga every single day. I do that right at home. I don't go to a, a yoga studio or nothing like that. 10 to 15 minutes of basic yoga. And if you don't know a yoga routine, you can find those on YouTube. There's millions of them out there. Even on Periscope. People do it live on Periscope. I do that. Then I'm either recording videos, I'm doing meetings, I'm going to events, I'm working with people that I'm talking to people that I'm working with. The days are different, you know. I do Toastmasters. Oh yeah, definitely, Sandy. Naps are all naps are everything because I like to. It's been proven actually. James Altucher said this. Those of you who know James Altucher, he said 
that is scientific studies have proven that people are at their sharpest mentally within two to four hours of waking up. So if you wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning, you are, you are at your sharpest mentally between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So that two to four hour window after you've woken up, that's when you're at your sharpest mentally. And right now it is 1.49 p.m. I just woke up at about 12 o'clock. So I'm about to be at my sharpest mentally in about 10 minutes. And I got a two hour window of sharpness. Guess what I'm be doing during that two hours? Recording videos. And this video is supposed to be about 10 minutes and we damn near at an hour right now. But I'm gonna keep going because I got to talk and this is how I get. So anyway, then for the rest of the day, is it could be all different things. I'm reading, I'm writing. The book, The One Thing, says the same thing. Absolutely. I like to get those most important things done first, just like Sandy just said. Early in the morning every day, I like to get the most important things done. Me, another thing I got from James Altucher, he says come up with 10 ideas a day. 10 ideas a day about anything. They don't have to be good ideas. They don't have to be ideas you actually do something with. Just 10 ideas because it works your idea muscle. It gets your brain working in the habit of coming up with ideas based on just your thoughts. So I start doing that every single day. So when I was on the Young Hustle show with the, my guy Jared Glant on the... Um, on Grant Cardone TV and I offered, I said, hey, anybody who emails me, I'm going to send you 10 ideas for your business or content to get you started. You wouldn't believe how many emails I got. It's been ridiculous, but I never had a problem giving people 10 ideas because I've been practicing that idea muscle all year. So this year alone combined, I wish I could show you if I had my phone, but I'm periscoping right now. I've come up with about, <clears throat> just answering those emails, I've given up with about a thousand ideas. It's crazy. And it hasn't been hard to me. I've never been stumped. Once I start responding to an email, I'm like pulling out them ideas like that. And that's not because I'm some genius. It's because I got that idea muscle exercise and condition to the point that coming up with 10 ideas is like normal to me. It's a normal thing. It's kind of like if you're a runner and you haven't run in a month, you try to run two miles, you're going to be tired as hell. But if you do it every single day, you could do five miles and not even be tired. That's the exact same thing with coming up with that, working that idea muscle. So that's what I start doing. I come up with 10 ideas a day. I always write every day because y'all see my website, dreallday.com, blogs every day. I make a YouTube video every single day. With the talking video, sometimes I record 10, 20 videos in one day. And that's actually what I'm going to do during this two to four hour period. I'm going to be making videos. i got to do my Q&A also. What else? And that's it. I think actually I'm gonna do my I should do my Q and A live on Periscope. What's y'all think about that? If y'all think I should do my Q and A live on Periscope today, because the way Periscope works is you can set it to save every video that you do. You it saves every video to your camera roll anyway. So I could do it live on Periscope and then I could still upload it to my computer, put it in iMovie, edit the video up, and then put it on YouTube tomorrow morning like I normally do. Yeah, I am definitely flowing. I'm doing my Q&A live on Periscope today. I'm going to do a separate scope so y'all don't all have to say in the same scope. This is a long-ass Periscope. And I know one thing about Periscope that kind of bugs me is that you can't fast forward and rewind. Because yesterday, I was watching somebody else's Periscope, and I actually went out of the Periscope. I was already 10 minutes in, and I went back. I'm like, damn, I got to watch the whole 10 minutes again to get to the part that I left off on. So I'm going to start a whole new scope. I'm going to do my Periscope live, and I'm going to take live questions as I do the Periscope. See? Idea muscle. Idea muscle. James Altucher. Shout out to James Altucher. This is how it works, man. This is exactly how it works. You just keep doing that. All right, so let me take some questions. Question, Raider Nation, you got a question. What's up? And he said, can you say it? Yes, you can save your own periscopes. You can't save somebody else's periscope. Well, technically you can't, but I can get to that in a second. You can set the settings in periscope that every time you do your periscope, it automatically saves to the camera roll on your phone. The challenge is you got to make sure you got a phone with enough space to actually hold it. I got the 128 gig iPhone 6 Plus, so I got plenty of space. I'm not even I haven't even used half the space on my phone. So you can save your own periscopes. If somebody else does a periscope, there is a way you can save it. You got to know how to do like some some uh, programming. What's it called? Coding type stuff, which I don't know how to do, but I have an assistant who does. So yesterday I was watching the Periscope and I liked the stuff he was saying so much I wanted to save it. I told my assistant, hey, I want you to get this Periscope. I gave her the link. I said, download this and send it to me via Google Drive. And she did it. I don't know how she did it, but I know it's possible. So the question is, Raider Nation says, am I a John Havoc type of player, meaning you're on the floor diving and fighting? I think you mean John Havlicek. Is that what you're talking about? On the floor diving and fighting for the ball? I mean, I don't dive for the ball that often. I don't think it happens that much off that much. But I wouldn't call myself even playing. No, I wouldn't say I'm that type of player. Somebody just asked a question. I missed it. So repost that question because I missed it. Somebody asked me one more question. And again, actually, let's make this part of the Q&A. All right, so if you got a question, 
Hold tight because I'm going in this scope in a second, and then I'm going to start a new one that's the live Q&A. If you got questions, you can come in on that. So let me finish with the, my daily routine. So my daily routine goes that 12 to 9 o'clock period. I could be doing a whole lot of different stuff. What would I say is a good way to organize your day? I'm, I'm telling you, the good way is the way that works best for you. So there is no one way that works for everybody. There are some super productive people who get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and there are some super productive people who get up at 10 o'clock in the morning and stay up till 3 o'clock the next morning. There is no right or wrong way. You do what works best for you because the way that you do something is the only way you could possibly do it. Because if there was a better way, you'd be doing a better way. So do what works for you. But I'm going to answer that in the Q&A. So all questions we're going to hold till I come back on the Q&A. Let me finish this daily routine. So about 9 o'clock, I'm doing... He said, I should piggyback the scope off of Jared's or someone else's for more followers. How do I do that? What do you mean, uh, Sandy? I don't even know what you mean by that. 9 o'clock Eastern, during that 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time frame is what I'm saying. Is It can be all different things. I'm an entrepreneur, so it's not one thing that I do every single day. I'm going to get to that in the Q&A. So that question asked me about, can you play basketball well without a jump shot? Hold that to the next one. So he said, I scope and then pass it off to somebody else and then they scope. Okay, I didn't know about that. I haven't, I haven't even thought about something like that, but I should connect with Jared. We could definitely do that. Thing is, I can't. I can't put a time frame on my Periscope, Sandy, because you see how it goes. When I get into giving people context and stories, I can go on and on because I got to give you the detail of the story so you understand why I'm doing the thing that I do. Oh, she says, so the followers go from mine to the others. All right, I like to do that. Actually, I'm going I'm to link up with Jared. We should actually make that happen, Sandy. You could be the, the broker of this, this uh, follower's transaction. That sounds good. That's a great idea. See? Idea muscle. Idea muscle. She said, let him go first. Yeah, because I might go longer. So anyway, 12 to 9 p.m. is, you know, it could be anything. I'm just doing doing my thing. Who is Jared? Jared is Jared Glant. He works directly with Grant Cardone. Any of you familiar with Grant Cardone? I did a show with them about three weeks ago in Miami Beach. Grant Cardone TV is called The Young Hustler Show. If you didn't see it, you can go to <clears throat> GrantCardoneTV.com and click on Young Hustlers. The show is called Secrets to Being a Baller. I'm actually going, I actually post it on my website too. So if you go to DreAllDay.com and just search Look up Jared Glant or Grant Cardone or Secrets to Being a Ball. You'll see that post. Jared Glant, Young Hustler. Yes, and Jared is also on Periscope. So follow him on Periscope. Any of you f are fans of Grant Cardone, he works directly with Grant. So if Grant thinks Jared is the guy, then he's definitely the guy. So follow him. I already worked with him, did a show with him, so I know he's the guy. Follow him. He's on Periscope almost every day. So there's a few people on here, people on here who saw that and found me through that. So... All right, Raider Nation said his phone's on 2%. Put it on the charger, bro. You got to put it on the charger, man. I got my phone on the charger right now hooked up to my computer. That's why I'm making sure my computer is awake so that I keep this, this phone charged while I'm doing this. This is a, a lot of recording that I'm doing here. I'm actually going to start doing all my YouTube commentary videos live on Periscope. And then I'll save it to my camera roll, and then I'll post it to YouTube. Now, see the idea muscle. This is what happens, man. The idea muscle. And Raider Nation said he forgot his portable charger. Here it is, man. Amazon. Bought this on Amazon for 20 bucks. This thing works. It's never run out of power. I've taken it with me on weekend trips. And it keep going. All right, Sandy. I really appreciate it. Definitely talk to Jared. Yes, he does have my number. I got his number, too. He got my email address. So we can definitely make that happen. So, yeah. See, I keep all this stuff handy. It's all in my little, my little station right here. So, anyway, what I was saying. So, yeah, I'm going to start doing all my live YouTube videos. I'm going to do all my YouTube videos live on Periscope so people who want to watch it live can see it. And then I'm going to post it on YouTube later. That's perfect. Sandy, really appreciate that. And, all right, so about 9 o'clock, that's when I start winding down. I try, to, I try to get off of electronic devices. Definitely, Sandy, I appreciate you. Tell Jared I said hello. Young Hustlers, let's get it. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, too. Let's get that. And so about 9 o'clock, I try to start, they said, do the YouTube live stream. I don't like doing a YouTube live stream because YouTube's live stream is kind of wonky and it requires all this coding and it's all this stuff. If you go to the YouTube live stream page, it's like all these things that they're asking for and I don't even know what none of that shit means. You know why a lot of people, people like using Periscope? Because you don't have to be any type of technical to do it. All you do is say stream, you type in what it is, and you hit the button and it starts. That's what I want YouTube to start doing. The other problem with YouTube is that I would have to do it from my computer, and the camera on my computer is not as sharp as the camera on my phone. The camera on my phone is 1080 HD. The camera on my computer is not 1080 HD. That's why I don't do it on YouTube, and the YouTube setup is very, very wonky. Because guess what? If YouTube had had the live stream thing set up right from the beginning, Periscope wouldn't exist. 
and neither would Meerkat because YouTube would have ate up the whole market. But YouTube dropped the ball on that, didn't do it right, or didn't know it was coming. And now Periscope is coming and taking a lot of YouTube people to do Periscope now. But people still probably do both. But anyway, about 9 o'clock, I try to start winding down. I try to get off the digital devices. I try to get off the digital devices, but I'm still responding to emails, watching videos. Of course, I'm looking at social media. If any of y'all follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you see sometimes I post on Instagram like 11 o'clock at night. As I get those ideas, when I'm just kind of calming myself down and, and just relaxing, that's when some of my best ideas hit me, when I'm not moving, 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 thinking, 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 talking, talking, talking. That's when the best ideas hit me. That's why some of my best posts come early as hell in the morning when I first woke up. My mind is not crowded with a whole bunch of other things or late at night when I'm about to go to sleep and I'm kind of letting everything go. If I'm saying good stuff, make sure you give me those hearts, y'all. I need those hearts. I need the love. But anyway... About 9 o'clock, that's when I start doing that. Around 10 o'clock, I try to lay down by 10 o'clock and go to sleep by 10 o'clock. I usually don't actually start sleeping until about 11 o'clock because there's other, other stuff going on I'm not even going to talk about here on Periscope. But anyway, and then I'm going to sleep by about 11 o'clock and then by 4 o'clock I'm up every day. So that is my daily routine. It took me an hour plus to tell you what my daily routine is, but I had to give you all context to let you all know how that go. So stay tuned if you want to see what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do my live. I'm going to do my Q&A live here on Periscope. I know it's going to save to my camera roll. Then I'm going to upload and put it on YouTube tomorrow morning. I appreciate all y'all who stuck around. I see I got a solid base of people who stuck around here. Radio Nation got a portable. Get ready. The Q&A is coming up in a couple minutes. It is coming. DreAllDay.com. Stick around. Q&A is coming up next. Work on your game. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here and make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.